Good morning. This is Morning Perfect Bass, and I hope you are having a good morning. I am here to work on my new Perfect Bass. I am going to work on it a little bit each day, and after a couple of weeks, uh, we're going to see how much progress I make. Mine, Minecraft Morning Perfect Bass is about, um, you know, the very simple act of, of just just doing the work on a regular basis. That's what I aim for. Um, just simple, repetitive work of base building, not, not a lot of block counting. So I'll occasionally do some work off camera and uh, sometimes I'll make one of these and I won't really be satisfied with the result. So I'll, I'll go back and I'll do it again. So uh, anyway, if it sounds, if, if there's been a lot of work done since the last time I made one of these since the last time you saw one of these it's it's just because I I sometimes do a little extra work so as always if there's anything you want covered in more depth here let me know and I'll see if I can get around to it now today's article is uh, <laughs> uh you know something really simple and I got started with it and I realized that it was gonna be so much bigger than I first thought I I just wanted to talk about uh, Silicon Valley's shift away from um, being a real center for change and innovation to being a place in a set of corporate entities that eschew their historical uh, link with Democrats in order to focus more on next quarter's profits. Um, that's an interesting story to me. That's an interesting transformation. And now it looks like our government's going to be regulating them. Uh, and that relationship is going to come to an end as they choose which path Silicon Valley does. They choose which path they want to walk here. I do want to apologize. Someone in my neighborhood has just started playing the drums, which is the most ridiculous, absurd, pointless thing, which has happened in a long time, possibly two months. And... You know, I hope I, I wish them the best. Maybe they're going to be part of some big band in a couple of years. But right now, they're just an asshole doing drum solos in the middle of my fucking day. Um, but I can't I can't talk about this regulation issue without talking about another story. I wanted I had this cool line about Silicon Valley's move from being a level playing field to a walled garden or worse, uh, a Skinner box of some kind. Right. Because of loot boxes and stuff. But I can't because I am committed to providing context. It's it's important to me, and I think I think I generally do a good job of it. Um, so so I have to talk about like a bunch of other things first. And I try I try not to go for the headlines here. Oh, the, 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 the. I'm trying to go for the headlines here. I try to you know give you something a little novel, if not in terms of what the headline is and the presentation in the take on the headline. So it's it's Facebook and it's Cambridge Analytica. Um, the, the Strategic Communications Lab is a British um, data-driven behavioral change program seller. This is what they sell. They, they direct these programs at populaces in countries around the world. And uh, SCL is hired by governments and corporations to influence public opinion, like, these organizations pay Cambridge and well, they pay SCL, Strategic Communications Lab, um, a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money. I'm, I'm gonna take those down. You remember there used to be a building here? No, it's not anymore. A lot of money because this is worth something to them because they can change the attitudes of public of the public. And in 2013, Steve Bannon, he convinced billionaire Robert Mercer to invest in a U.S. spinoff of SCL called you know, Cambridge Analytica got ahead of myself a little bit and so um is this the wall yep this is the wall let me take this down another level i shouldn't be confused as to whether or not this is the wall because uh there we go um i don't know bannon's history with strategic communications lab and i don't have time to look into it i mean it there's a lot of time between these episodes but i don't spend all of it researching this stuff cambridge analytica hired professor alexander kogan to develop an app to administer a basic five-point personality test. The app forced those being tested to sign on through their Facebook account. No more act, no more goddamn pickaxes. Oop. 
And once it got authorization from those people, it went through the profiles of people they knew and were connected with, people whose profile trusted their profiles and started scraping up data. Um, the app, uh, there were like 200,000 accounts, 200,000 people that did this. And through that, they got about 300, 30 million accounts. Um, probably, but well, it's, it's a whole other thing. Without consent, that personal data, friends, posts, pictures, likes, schedules, places of work, uh, 30 million people were affected. Uh, accounts conflict, but Kogan was either allowed to collect that information and he handed it over illegally, or he broke the rules whenever he did turn it over to that party. Um, another version says it was all legal under the Facebook terms of use at that time. And in fact, way more than 30 million people were affected by similar apps, not just Cambridge Analytica. This is just a, a little pause while you think about that. 30 million people. Um, that's a tenth of the U.S. population. I mean, spread all over the world, about 8 billion. So it's still a hefty, a hefty percentage of the population. It's a lot of data being stolen for, I think, $400,000, if I remember right offhand. It's not in my notes. Um, this was worth, this was worth that much to those people. Um, it was 800,000. The slide changed. It was worth at least that much money to them to change the opinions of the public. So Cambridge Analytica's plans specifically on behalf of Bannon and Mercer were to uh, target voters, not by gross demographic information, or age, race, geography, but by individual psychological profiles. Psychographics was the term for the, the product they were selling. Um, this happened a long time ago. Uh, in fact, it was revealed a long time ago. I am not 100% sure on why people care now. You see this happen a lot where folks assume that because something is random that it is, it is arbitrary. And I, I don't know the reasons behind it. But it is random. I do not believe it's arbitrary. I think people do care about things. There's um, what I call is like a, a, a public focus, the idea where people are like, oh, people are always getting angry about causes and then a week later they don't care. I'm like, no, because... A week later, people have jobs to get to, you know? Um, people care about issues because there's so many things wrong with the world and all of us have so little time to tackle all of it. Um, but one of the reasons I think people care when they didn't before is Trump. It all comes down to Pooh and Trump, I think. Uh, it, you know, it's, got, it's got everything you want in a Trump story. Um, Facebook, Russians, Dr. Kogan's Mol uh, Mo Moldovan, I think. And he's an associate professor. Whoop, need a pickaxe. Um, he's an associate professor at St. Petersburg University. Um, so you put all this together and it sounds, it's, it's just, it's really going to draw on the clicks. But honestly, it's, it's not all that bad. Um, by all accounts, Trump's campaign didn't use the Cambridge Analytica data. They used good old-fashioned Republican data. They hired Cambridge Analytica, don't get me wrong. But, because um, they're scumbags and they, these loogies just seem to, to stick together in the toilet bowl. Um, well, it's more than that, actually. Mercer, in order to get the backing of Mercer, who's a billionaire conservative kingmaker, he demanded that people use Cambridge Analytica. So people would take his money and just deal with Cambridge, which uh, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Um, I mean, look, I, I want to drag that faded red windbag over the coals, but I, I want to do it only for credible shit that he actually does. And, and credibility is the key to... Uh, it doesn't matter either. Look, um, it, I would I would much rather hit Trump on the many, many things he's done rather than try to gin up some sort of complicity with Cambridge Analytica. He did work with those scumbags, and Steve Bannon saw all of that. Uh, but this isn't one of those things connected to the 2016 election. It's a completely different um, set of, of jackassery. Um, Cambridge Analytica saw value in this data. They wanted the data if only to seem credible. And then, you know, they sold that product to basically the, this Mercer guy. And, you know, it was worth a lot of money. Whether that actually materialized um, in terms of, of value what, that they sold to their customers, it doesn't matter because it, it helped sell them. And that's, that's one of the things about Cambridge Analytica is that they are clearly the scumbags of this story uh, at the very least. Uh, every GOP operations that worked for them has worked for them hates them 
Just the worst. Let me clean this thing up. This is going on over too. Ah, uh, damn it. Okay, I'm not going over these seeds then. Um, the Republicans that work with them fucking hate them. They dispute the results of Cambridge Analytica's work. Um, uh, there we go. And uh, we don't even know if their psychographic profiles work. It's just a product backed up with a lot of numbers. Um, they might just be scam artists ripping off rich conservative um, politicians, which um, is wrong. It's wrong to do that. It's wrong to promise people a good service and then give them a crappy one. Um, their CEO, Alexander Nix, I think it was, he was caught on a BBC4 sting operation telling a pretend Malaysian candidate about all the dirty tricks he could do in terms of uh, framing political opponents and fixing races, uh, using illegal means to tip uh, elections over, um, how methods of how he would eliminate the paper trail so that they couldn't be held responsible for breaking the law. Um, he's been he's since been suspended, but I think we know how well that's going to go over. Um, also, Cambridge Analytica, despite running the races for a lot of American conservative politicians, has almost no American staff. Um, they hire a lot of people out of Canada, and they get American contractors on a race-by-race -race basis. So the firm hired by Trump is incredibly reluctant to hire Americans, strangely enough. Uh, I mean, that's it's just so fitting. That's just completely his MO. But uh, there's no discount comics today. I'm, I'm just punching right through these stories, man. I just, I have to get them out. You, at this point, you should know how it is. I have to get these things out. So someone stole your data and they stole it because you put it into the care of Facebook and CEO Mark Zuckerberg. So now he's gone in front of Congress and everyone's doing their, I'm sorry, dances like it's like they're Michael Flatley in 1994. But Apparently, Cambridge Analytica has Ministry of Defense files, and Zuckerberg blew off Parliament, and Cambridge Analytica's work on the Brexit campaign broke a, a couple of laws. I haven't really looked into it that deeply because American and time restraints, but it seems pretty bad. Uh, it seems like they screwed over England's, well, Britain, I guess, slightly worse than us. Uh, it looks pretty bad, though. Like, you should definitely not trust those people. And uh, you should not trust people who work with them. Um, you should definitely definitely not trust people who work with Cambridge Analytica uh, their, or strategic communications lab look just making things worse there was this memo released by uh, one of the Facebook uh, no wait the egg I can throw the egg haha haha -ha. anyway Boz Bosnick Bosniak uh, that's a Facebook guy and where he talks about hey look growth at any cost hey sometimes terrorists are gonna use our platform and kill people sometimes folks are gonna get bullied to death but our main goal here is growth and that is super callous um, but you read it and you realize parts of it are taken out of context look the context is that this guy's an asshole and he go he blows right past the very reasonable and expected result of having a platform whereby people can communicate you know um, privately and that is that you know bullying happens and terrorism happens but you know, McDonald's gives people heart attacks. And if there was a memo from a McDonald's uh, exec that said, hey, look, our job is to sell people hamburgers and some, some people are gonna have heart attacks. I think, I think you understand the context of that. It's not cold heartedness, it's just saying, hey, we have a product, some people will misuse our product. That does not mean that we shouldn't keep pushing and growing our product. Um, the guy seems like an asshole though. Uh, everyone's treating this like it's the end of Facebook. It's, it's not though, it's just, the beginning of maybe making Facebook act like a, a goddamn adult. You know, I'm glad people are angry enough to demand demand that Facebook act like a big company. I've noticed that um, companies, when they're smaller, cut a lot of corners and they get bigger and they're finally made to act like adults and they're just the most put off by that. Um, but anyway, I'm rambling. People are going to cancel their Facebook accounts, and I think that's probably a pretty good idea. Um, you know, Facebook shouldn't be trusted, and we should definitely keep hammering social media sites where they feel it, where they're going to feel it, uh, until they, they act like responsible companies and, and stewards of data that we trust them with, personal data. 
um, you know, when they say, hey, your memories or whatever are important, they, sh they should mean that. Um, they should act like it's important by putting their money where their mouth is. And, you know, so consequently, blah, 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 people are going to regulate Facebook because say it with me now, corporations never regulate themselves. Um, so now we're going to have to have people come in and do that. Real, um, I would say adults, but have the U.S. government. And we just had a Facebook guy go to Congress. And I don't have an exceptional amount of confidence that our leaders know enough about technology to effectively fucking regulate Facebook. But you know, you know, if Facebook had cleaned its own house, we wouldn't be regulating them. And if you don't want idiots regulating industries, maybe, just a maybe, uh, those industries should clean their own house before it comes to that, before the idiots can roll in and start telling them what to do. Like, it's not a simple concept. Like, this isn't new ground that we're dealing with in terms of companies and regulation. I just need torches, guys. It is fucking stone stupid obvious shit. And uh, that's been your easy breezy uh, Minecraft news for adults today. So until I get a good sign off. Wrong button. There you go.